Good morning. It's Friday. Out here doing the official frost check. Oh, ho, ho, ho. All right, so it is official. I don't know if that one hit the ground or if it hit the roofs, but it's, uh, well, it froze. See, see, our weather station quit the other day, so we don't know the outside temperature. But for the ice to be like that on the car, whew, I can tell you it's very much below zero or very much was below zero. So we, uh, I was, was finished swapping to the other day and there was a bunch of people asking, uh, well, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Why don't you just straight cut it? We all straight cut now. And uh, there are lots of people around our, our area that do straight cut. Um, we haven't tried it yet. And some of the people that we've seen go the straight cut route um, after a few years ended up buying swathers again. So my question would be this morning to people is if you do straight cut, like how do you get away with it? Because our canola is nowhere near ready. The nowhere near at the point where it can take a frost. If our canola froze, froze hard, minus five, minus, you know, my, minus five to minus 10, it would stay green and we'd have sample canola. Nothing, uh, you know, nothing good about it. So that is one of the big reasons why we swap. We've got to get it knocked down, you want it down, whatever, like a week before it freezes, that way the seeds have cured up and, and firmed up and, and then it can take a frost after that. Well, good morning again. We finished breakfast. Um, it's very wet and very dewy and there was a touch of frost last night. I'm not sure if it hit the ground But it definitely was on the roof of Corey's car So I'm just over here. Uh, I got an issue with the batteries here. I'm not exactly sure. So I took one out that was totally screwed and So they're mismatched again, but I thought it was working now that it's a little cooler in the morning. It's not working not enough jam to uh, get her started. So we're gonna run the battery charger treatment until we're done harvest. And then I'll put that other set of batteries in. I had to come over to the feed shed just to do a little bit of inventory. So the bullseye guy, he's planning a load for the end of September to come up here. Various minerals and supplement and stuff for people. Uh, the lady that ordered these six bags is coming for these today. So we'll get them out of the way. Um, and we are, running low because i haven't had the mill running so i uh oh that's the other thing i should i should bag up her 50 pound bags i gotta do that right now just up north it, uh, it's got quite a bit of green in it we're not really pumped about it but that's why we like to tell last plan will be if it, uh, if it tests dry but there's lots of green ones in it we got uh, 8,000 bushels of aeration bins that we can put it in so we'll do that and then we're gonna have a week or two here of uh, well we got to get our oats but it's only about 100 acres too so that should go pretty quick and then uh, that disaster of peas and canola but uh, after that we got a a week or a week or so of waiting for that first canola and then we'll uh do some bin shuffling here well good afternoon i gotta sneak this in just before the the, the phone dies shows kind of the insanity of the year so we're uh north of the farm a little bit here um this is our last quarter of barley the other three were out west this is a little a mile east and a mile north of the farm and uh it's it's totally turned around so out there we had there there must have been parts of the fields yielding over a hundred um of course there was parts that yielded a little less but and end to end it was really good and uh we'd, we'd never really seen anything like that before so kind of wiped away the idea that the drill wasn't was was set wrong or seeding too shallow because this was seeded with the same drill within a day or two of that barley out there it's short uh there's a lot of green ones in it um let's just walk out here quick so uh you can see in here right there's some some green ones that are a very small head um and then these ones right beside it that are tipped right over 
they're ripe and that's kind of all throughout same seed same drill same seeding conditions same everything this was canola stubble last year that south quarter that we just finished off of was canola stubble last year so really they should be identical and uh we do get a lot of spot showers and things like that um see dad had thought just north of the farm got a little bit more rain because the peas which are just kitty corner to this field ran quite a bit better than the other field but now that theory is washed away because the barley is is the worst so it really seems to be just a toss in the air for what happened um i doubt we're ever going to know now because nothing makes sense at all our farm is not spread out like like you know large farms are we're basically within a five mile circle or something um with the exception of the one north of town but uh i don't think i don't think we've ever seen such huge variations in yield from effectively you know i would say average at best to poor Corey claims her monitor is saying 65 bushels but i'm just i don't know i'm not i'm not buying it they've already moved pretty far and they've already i've only got three truckloads off of here so we'll see in the end but it's not gonna uh it's not gonna be the best quality grain either because of all the green in there so i you know i doubt it will make a uh, malt so we're gonna keep it separate i know some guys have good luck they'll take the green barley and they'll throw it in an aeration bin because it's only testing about 15 so it's not going to be all that hard to dry but it's going to be harder to dry than the other stuff and uh guys have taken that grain thrown it in an aeration bin on a warm day when it's 25 degrees and the green ones will come out some of the moisture will come out and it'll uh, you don't even have to dry it we're not that brave we don't even have the proper aeration setups so we're just gonna dry it. And I have a feeling drying the grain with the combination of it being tough and all the green ones in there, I mean, the germ will drop right off because once you dry the green ones, they won't grow, I don't think. So we'll keep this separate. We'll need all of this for feed anyways. So not, not the end of the world, but it still is frustrating to see such a huge difference and not know why. Holy smoke, this is no good. Look at that. So I have taken, I've taken some bushels out of here, I guess. Tanham's been here a couple times. This brown truck's been here three or four times. That International was here once this morning and they have been dumping into the Super V, but look how far they've come. I mean, gee whiz, this, they're like, they're, see, they're half done, this friggin' thing. So, uh, hard to, uh, you, know, do, you know, don't beat a dead horse as they say, but it's, it's hard, it's hard not to mention it over and over again. Like what happened? This hardly even grew. Very discouraging. There's a big rock here too. I'll pick that up. Somebody tried to pick it up with the combine already. Okay. That's the only rock in the whole field. We don't have rocks around here. Somebody must have jumped off the road and put it there. All right, what do we got for hype here? Of course, the heads are tipped over, so you lose their height, but yeah, this isn't even up to my knees. And I'm sure you can see out there that you can see the green. Uh, Corey claims it gets better to the north, but I think maybe she just said that to make us feel better in the yard i don't know i think she was telling tricks but you know as uh as my mom says to the grandkids when they're picking things out or whatever you get what you get and you don't get upset so i guess i'll take i'll take that and and i'll run with it we had three quarters of barley that ran very well and uh and one here that looks like it's gonna be a 
Well, a disappointment to say the least. Lots of green ones in there. I just tested it. It was testing like 14.8. So, yeah, we're going to throw it in the air bins, I think, if we get behind. Uh, just to, uh, I don't know. To kind of, kind of want to get this stuff done, too. When you get into fields like this, you just, you know, you just want it to end. You know, when you, we were on the west half and we were on the south quarter, you didn't want that to end. You know, that was going so well, especially the south quarter. Easy combining for them. Even the little kids were having fun. And back and forth and couldn't keep up hauling. <clears throat> the one thing that's interesting though is we took that sample out of the dryer and the barley bushel weight was 55 pounds. So if this stuff weighs up, even though it's got some green and stuff in it, then, uh, well that's wheat, it's not even barley. Um, it's going to make tremendous speed because I, I could almost guarantee this can't make mulch with as green as it is. But you never know. Sometimes you send them out and they, they surprise you. I am going to jump in Carl here and get him backed up. Save the, the combine operators a trip up the field and then I'll walk back up, get the tandem. That, oh, this is what I was going to show everybody. So I don't know if this green one grew out of the same plant, but you know, green one growing. Let's pull it here. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. See where are we at here. I think this is a little. Forget it. Had enough. It's got dirt all up my sleeve. <laughs> 